Hey, it's Jeff with yourlearningcareer.com. So today I'm going to show you a very quick and easy way to create a screencast for your training videos, whether it's a software demo or maybe you want to do some kind of demo on a company website. You know, there are a lot of different reasons that you'd want to create a screencast. Now to do this, I'm going to be using iSpring Suite. Uh, don't worry if you don't have iSpring Suite. I will put a link to it in the description below so you can check it out, get a free demo. By the way, I would like to thank iSpring for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so right now I'm in PowerPoint because this is what my demo is going to be. My demo is going to be, uh, I'm going to show how to add a hyperlink to a shape so that you can jump to a slide. So this is just going to be real simple. Now, to get into the screencasting software, there are a couple ways I can go. Um, if I'm already building a course in PowerPoint, like if this is going to be part of a larger course, I could do it here from the iSpring Suite tab. I would go and I would click on screen recording. Um, or I can do it outside of PowerPoint um, if I just want to make an independent training video. And that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to go into my iSpring Suite 11 apps. And the one I will be using is iSpring Cam Pro. Here I'm going to have two options. I can either create a new recording or a new project. Um, if I know I'm doing a recording, I'll usually go ahead and start with new recording because when I'm done recording, it's actually going to bring me into a project anyway. So I might as well just start here. Before I start recording, there are a few options I want to select from here. Um, as you can see, I've got the option to record just the screen. But if I wanted to create a webcam video, like a talking head video, I could do that in here as well. I could click on camera and just record my camera, or I could do a combination. I could record my screen and my camera at the same time. If you've seen those video tutorials where the person is like in the corner talking, so you could do that. Um, but in this case, I am just going to record the screen. So I'm going to leave that there. And then the next thing I'm going to choose is the screen area. Now I could go here and I could, you know, I could make this bigger or smaller, the screen area, or I could keep it simple. That's what I usually do. I usually just do full screen. So I'll click that. And now it's going to record the whole area of my screen. And then the last thing I want to look at is the microphone. For my tutorials, I usually do my narration as I click around. So I do select a microphone and I keep it on. Um, but if you're not going to record, if you're just going to record yourself clicking around and you're going to do the audio later, you could mute your microphone like so. But for me, I'm going to keep that on. So once you've got that set up the way you want, you are ready to record. So I'm going to click on the record button here. It's going to give me a countdown and notice it tells me press F10 to stop recording. All right. So it is recording right now and I'm going to start my tutorial. So my tutorial is this. All right. So to add a hyperlink, I'm going to click on this shape. I will go up to insert. I'm going to click on link and then insert link. And I'm going to click on place in document. And then I'll click on slide five because that is where I want it to go. And then I will hit OK. All right, now I'm done recording. So I'm going to hit F10. All right, so now I'm in the project. So once I hit that F10, it brings me into the project. And check this out. I love this. Notice it says screen recording complete. And then it tells me I can add annotation for my captured keystrokes. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to click this box to add annotation, which is very cool. Um, and in fact, I can even customize the annotations. This is what they're going to look like. 
Um, and if I want, I can change the color, font, etc. but I'm gonna leave them as is. And then I'm gonna click on continue to continue editing. All right, so this should look familiar. If you've done any kind of video editing, this should look pretty familiar. It's a timeline, right? And you can see I've got my audio on this track. I've got um, my screen on here. And now I can do some editing. If I click on the video track, you're gonna see there are some tools here. There's noise tool, there's cropping tool. So there's some of that there. If I click on the audio track, I get a few tools. And then if I go to the home tab, you can see these different things I can do. So in my case, I have my audio already because I narrated while I did the demo. But if I wanted to, like, you know, like I said, if you have your audio separate, maybe you have someone else do your voiceover, you could bring in an audio file. You could, if you wanted to combine this with another video file, you could do that. Um, or you could create some new audio by recording from your microphone. And then you have these other options as well, adding pictures, adding text, adding shapes. So there's quite a bit that you can do to enhance your screencast. So for me, the first thing I wanna do, I know that this first section of audio and video, like this was not part of the video. This was me explaining how to hit record and things like that. So I know I don't want that and I'm gonna edit this out. And let me just show you how I can do that. If I left click up here and drag I can go all the way to where I want this to cut. And then I can bring this over and see what it's doing. It's selecting everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard and notice how everything moves over to the left, including the captions. So I can edit like that or another way I can edit Another way I can remove clips, like let's say, you know, this very last bit is, I know I, I wanna remove that because I was talking about clicking F10. I can select each track. I'm gonna hit shift to select both and click on each one. And then I'm going to, I can use this split tool or I can just hit S on the keyboard. And then once again, I can click each one with a shift and I can delete and get rid of that last bit, you know? And yeah, I could do that throughout, you know, if there were sections I needed to get rid of. Next, I wanna show you how these captions work. So notice when I get to this part where I'm going up and I'm saying click on insert, look at that. This automatically was added because I hit that little checkbox. Click the insert tab item, it says. And then if I keep going, this one is click the link split button, uh, click the insert link menu item, all right? So that's really cool that I have these annotations. And if you agree, make sure to hit the like button. What I might do though, it says click the insert tab item. Well, maybe I just wanted to say click insert. No problem. I can go in and I can edit this. So I'm just gonna select the shape. I'm gonna go in here, get rid of what I don't want. There you go. And now it just says click insert because that's, that's how I would tell somebody. And then something else I wanna show you, let's say if I had multiple videos and let's, let me go ahead and split these up. I'm gonna hit S, okay. So now let's say I've got these, uh, these couple of video clips, right? And I wanna do a transition. So let me just show you how those look. So if I go to transition effects, you've got a bunch of different transitions you can do, fades, wipes, splits. I usually just do, you know, I'll probably just do a simple fade. So if I drag this onto the clip, so now 
when it goes from this to the next one, you'll see it fades. So that's kind of nice. Once you have your video the way you want it, you're ready to publish. And when you go to publish, you will be able to publish it into an MP4 file. So you can do it in a few different ways. You can publish it to your computer, into your video folder if you want to do that. Or you could even publish right to YouTube if that's how you're going to share your video. And then you also have these other iSpring options, iSpring Space, iSpring Learn, if you have those. But I'd say probably most of the time, I'm going to do it uh, to my computer and then distribute it from there. Obviously, this is not meant to be a full-blown video editing solution, but for creating training videos, you know, screencasts, software demos, web demos, whatever the case may be, it has plenty under the hood for you to create great professional looking videos. And remember, this is only one piece of the overall iSpring suite. iSpring suite has tons of tools that come with it. And if you want to learn more about those, then you're going to want to check out this video next.